So on behalf of Kerry Dark Sky Tourism and uh, the live project, I uh, want to welcome you to this little video we're doing of um, how to photograph the moon. Uh, obviously we're not going to be photographing the moon uh, in the middle of the day, but uh, we welcome John Flannery from the Irish Astronomical Society who is going to talk us through some techniques to use with point and shoot and SLR cameras to get a shot at the moon. So uh, as we prepare to uh, photograph the moon, first thing to know is when the moon is going to be about. Uh, easy enough to download a good app that will uh, have moon maps and um, this is an example of the kind of thing you can get. Uh, the other thing that we uh, suggest is um, this excellent book. Uh, it's a Collins published uh, Moon Gazing Beginner's Guide to Exploring the Moon comes from the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. Uh, some excellent stuff in it and a good basis on which to start. Moon Gazing by Collins. Uh, just following on from what Steve was saying about using uh, an app or a sky guide to find out what phase of the moon and pl planning your moon shot is, is kind of critical. Now very often um, you'll just notice the, the moon happening to appear and you'll just be interested in taking a photo. But depending on the phase of the moon you can compose some very interesting shots. And the fact the moon varies through the phases means that its, its aspect changing during the months will enhance the view. For example, when the moon is a thin crescent you can get a phenomenon called Erdshine, where the rest of the moon is faintly illuminated due to sunlight bouncing off the day side of the earth onto the night side of the moon and that, that's quite a dramatic phenomenon to, to photograph. Or full moon as it's rising, um, there's great interest in super moons and to catch them as they come up over the horizon is, is really spectacular too. So one of the things we always recommend is that you have a bit of foreground and what better foreground than the, uh, the beautiful McCarthy's Castle down at Ballinscalli's Beach. John, I have a point and shoot camera. How do I use it to get a good shot of the moon? Yeah, good question, Steve. The um, point and shoots nowadays are just so versatile. They're uh, very cheap to pick up and they have an incredible zoom range. Generally, they go to maybe 10 or 4 or even 20, 30, 40 times optical zoom and then uh, digital zoom can go up to almost 100 or 120. Uh, as well as the point and shoots, you have uh, in between cameras called bridge cameras, they're halfway between point and shoot and DSLRs. But generally, if I take a moonshot, I change the setting to manual rather than use the pre selection scenes that are available on the dials. By changing the setting to manual, it gives you a bit of control over the uh, shutter speed and the aperture of the, the shot. Um, the focus will happen automatically and you, when you switch it on, and then you can zoom out using the telephoto settings. One thing about when you photograph the moon through a camera is the um, image scale will be quite small unless you zoom in. Like the human eye sees the moon to a certain scale, but because the camera is, is uh, just observing it at a completely different image scale to the human eye, it can actually appear quite tiny in the image. That's why when you take phone shots, the moon can appear quite tiny unless you zoom in. But, when, but the settings I tend to use, in fact, it's really play around with the settings is the main thing. Um, I'd use an aperture of, well, the, the best this can do is f5.6, and then I would use a shutter speed of one, maybe one six hundredth of a second. Uh, but certainly one uh, thing you'd find as well is uh, if you're hand-holding it, uh, use the self-timer setting where it does maybe a two-second countdown because then it'll stabilise the shot for you. Because
because you're hand holding it. That's critical to, to stabilize the shot. Otherwise you get blurry, blurriness in it. Okay, John, it's night time. I'm at the uh, Kerry International Dark Sky Reserve, McCarthy's Castle. I've got a nice foreground. I have a camera. What am I going to do to get a shot of the moon? Well, very similar to what we were saying about point and shoot cameras. Um, the settings are very similar in, in terms of manual adjustment. Now with, with a DSLR, you have much more latitude. Uh, you can interchange the lenses. Uh, the, the image will actually be quite sharper because the, the quality of the lenses will be better than on a lot of point and shoots. But certainly, um, you can do the like the settings as maybe f5.6. Uh, the lens that's on this particular DSLR is a standard kit lens that came with the Canon camera. It, it goes from 18 to 55 millimeters. The uh, other thing you can do is you, you tend to bracket exposures. What that means is you. You might set the aperture to f5.6, but you change the shutter speed over a, sh a short range of maybe one six hundredth of a second to one two fiftieth of a second, and that will allow you get um, like like determine if you're overexposing the image. Now with, with the DSLR, you can interchange lenses. So this is a three hundred millimeter lens. But it zooms from seventy to three hundred. So it's equivalent to magnifying about four times uh, what the human eye can see. And, and by zooming in, you can get some quite spectacular shots of the moon close off the moon rise. And the, the beauty of DSLRs as well is that um, you, you can record uh, video with them, you can uh, create photo sequences. You can Because the moon is so bright an object, you're, you're going to use very short exposures anyway. So, so yeah, like very very similar to a point and shoot a DSLR will allow you to get lots, but, but it's the versatility of a DSLR is is well worth investing in ultimately.